Check out this montage of crazy robots. This one's meant to entertain kids. That's why it's small, just like children. This robot is inserted through a small hole in your abdomen. And then these even smaller robots come out of it, which can be controlled remotely. And this robot has a human inside. It's an exoskeleton. This robot is literally Spider-Man. This is a robot land octopus. These robots are replacing cheerleaders. This is a robot kangaroo. This is a robot snake that can crawl up your legs or a pipe. This is a robot cockroach. You can step on it and it keeps moving. And this is a robot bird with robot feathers. This is a robot butterfly. And this is a robot salamander. This robot is undescribable, but it can jump. This is probably a robot fish because I can't see why else this girl would be like so chill riding it for so long. Agility Robotics has released the newest version of its newest humanoid robot called Digit. Digit is meant to be like a multi-purpose, human-centric logistics worker. Digibot is definitely a humanoid robot, and it's meant to be used in spaces that were meant for humans. Places like warehouses, distribution centers, and DJing large raves. Digit was demonstrating her autonomous capabilities in a replica of a warehouse last week, while her mother company, Agility Robotics, was giving people a chance to purchase this around-the-clock, highly motivated worker. And warehouses often involve a lot of repetitive tasks that can lead to injuries and high turnover, which can disrupt supply chains. And the cool thing about having a robot that can be upgraded through firmware is in the future they can give it new abilities through firmware upgrades. So the hope is that this robot will handle the dull and dirty work so that the real humans can go out there and do the more creative and fulfilling work. Disney just showcased a brand new robot and it's meant to have complex human-like interactions with park guests. The robot that was built to resemble Judy Hopps from the Zootopia movies was specifically designed to create an emotional connection with the guests. And Robo Judy is actually using motion capture data from a real human's face to help capture these emotions into the robot. And this gives Disney Imagineers a whole new way to create lots of expressive emotions in a form factor that's smaller than a human could fit oh, inside no. of a suit. Additionally, some of the artificial intelligence that they're putting into this robot is going to allow the robot to have a unique experience with each guest that it interacts with, enhancing the immersion. Now, the development has sparked some discussions about whether or not in the future they could replace all of the characters that do meet and greets with robots. Now, the argument for it is that the robot characters would eliminate the concern about humans overheating inside of the costumes. But despite these benefits, some people argue that it's just not tradition for Disney to put robots in these meet and greet outfits. They just want to know that there's a real human in there pretending to be Goofy and Donald and Mickey and all those characters at the meet and greet. Now, personally, I don't care if it's human or robot. I just need to complete my autograph book. Did you know that the Swedish meatball restaurant IKEA now also carries furniture and drones? Okay, you probably knew about the furniture, but did you know that IKEA is now using drones to fly around their stores and do inventory management? As of right now, IKEA has more than 100 of these drones buzzing around 16 different locations in Europe. Now, IKEA said that the main task that they're doing right now is locating and counting inventory. But there's multiple ways that these drones might become more useful in the future, especially in terms of security and safety. And so far from a logistics point of view, not only can the drones move much faster than the humans, they're actually more accurate at counting also, using camera vision and artificial intelligence. Also, drones provide a really interesting way to put real-time feedback into a bigger logistical system so it can update the website or the deliveries. But for now, that's not possible because the drones only fly at nighttime when the store is closed because, you know, they don't want to freak out the customers. Boston Dynamics, the robot company that's famous for their crazy YouTube videos of robots dancing, is now taking on a new challenge, and that is commercialization. And their first commercial robot is named Stretch. Now, it's not designed for like agility and dancing like its sister and brother Spot and Atlas, but it makes probably more sense to go this direction for a company that needs to turn a profit someday. And Stretch is really good at one use case, and that is moving boxes, specifically unloading trucks at this point. So the goal here was to have a use case and knock down the complexity of the robot so that it could actually provide some real world value. Now this form factor is great at unloading trucks and in the future it'll probably be good at doing two other things that it's not meant to do yet and that is build pallets and load trucks in the first place. And over time Boston Dynamics wants to eventually come up with a single humanoid robot that can pretty much do everything that a human can do but right now it makes a little bit more sense to focus on this niche. 
Scientists have now built a frighteningly cool caterpillar-like soft robot that can actually like inchworm its way under your door. So they were inspired by how real caterpillars control their movements by contracting and inchworming along. But to make a robot that can sort of bend and move in that same way, they use silver nanowire to build the robot and that contracts and expands when it's heated and cooled, which allowed the scientists to control the curvature and inch along. So they can make this thing move either forward or backwards depending on how they align the heat pattern. And they can get this caterpillar to move based on the pattern pattern of heat that they give it. So the robot is made of two different layers of polymer that react differently to heat. So the bottom layer shrinks as the top layer expands. Now these things have kind of a top speed because the faster you heat them up, the quicker they can move, but you have to let the heat dissipate for it to relax back into its flat position every single time it moves. So relaxing the caterpillar between movements actually mimics a lot of how the human muscle works. Now the next step is to install a very tiny speaker and chat GPT so that it can crawl under your door and sing a poem to you. Google researchers have developed a new artificial intelligence model called Palm E. The E stands for embodied, so imagine something as smart and adaptable as ChatGPT, but inside of a form factor of a robot that can actually move in three-dimensional space and interact that way. Palm E combines visual and language skills. And that means that a new Palm E powered robot can actually make decisions on tasks that it's never seen before, including real-world sorting problems like taking colored blocks and separating them. So because it's a large language model like ChatGPT, at its core, it actually takes sensor data, which can be image data, and it can change that into a description, which it can then feed in like a chat GPT prompt, get a reply back, and then transcribe it back into whatever sensor modality that it needs. So it can generalize to new tasks that it's never even seen before, as well as some awesome demonstrations where it's actually opened up drawers and retrieved objects, and all sorts of like sorting problems that you wouldn't think that a robot like this could be able to do. The world's largest robot is set to be built at a Norwegian airport. And this robot will replace the manual process of multiple airplane maintenance tasks, such as de-icing the wing, cleaning the engine, and doing technical inspections. And as a side benefit, there's going to be much less carbon, so lower carbon emissions from the airlines, which is a big part of why the financial fund Innovation Norway paid for this project in the first place. Developing green technology is crucial to achieving the goals set out in the Paris Agreement.